Good evening and welcome to the stream. Um, today we're going to be answering a, uh, t or tonight I guess, we're going to be answering a different question than we did previously. We're going to be looking at this sort of interesting astronomy question. Uh, how long is the Sun closer to the Earth than Mars is? And we're actually going to use this as an excuse to uh, learn about some of the new features, not new features, some of the more interesting features of sea spice. So let's go ahead and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, do that. So we can go ahead and can go into BC. I guess it really doesn't matter. We're going to go into Astro just because that's where I keep all my C programs, so it's so it's easier. And we're going to say um, BC comp dis dot C. Okay. And since I have no idea what I'm doing, it turns out that some of my earlier. Okay, what am I doing here? A few. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's find out what I'm doing here. Uh, so some of my earlier programs actually did deal with uh, some of my example programs did deal with this. So I am I'm hoping that that will help us. Um, and these were just test programs that I wrote to see that I understood how uh, C Spice worked. But C Spice is actually pretty flexible. Um, minimal NASA failing observations outer space. Whew. And I'm, I, th I think these were just programs that had silly names like example one, example two. Um, so n there we are, example one, example two. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started here. And let's take a quick look at example one. Now this is, as always, I'm doing this without a uh, without a uh, clue as to what I'm doing. Um, and this is a modification of example one, and it is. Basically, um, the geometric event finder in um, C Spice will let you look at any function to see when it turns becomes zero. It's not limited to the functions that are built into C Spice. Um, so that I'm hoping will be will be here. We are like gfud gfud s, which sounds like a silly thing to say, but it's actually this sort of thing where um, GFQ is a function that turns a scalar value of interest and GFDCRX determines when that uh, function is increasing or decreasing. And when you do that, you can get all like the zeros or any value you want out of the function or local minimum. Um, you can get an exact value of zero and so forth and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, let's see. Um, I'm not sure I want to take all of the code from GFUD's example, um, especially since I want to double check what GFUD's actually does. Uh, let's see. So, let me see if I can see a, um, a program that is small enough to use, uh, but big enough to have some interest in it. So Playground 7 I don't think is what I want. Um, well, let me check. Playground 7 might be actually what I want. Um, so no, it's not. Um, example 2 probably won't work. Playground, Playground, Playground 5, Example 1. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do GFUD's example. This is... we're gonna heavily edit it, but uh, so we're just going to insert GFUD's example into this file. Um, Maxwin, don't care. So this is the um, declaration here. DV norm, double state. Okay. So the main the main uh, program here we're going to take spice double step adjust. Okay. Furnish standard TM. Um, these are just variable declarations. They're not interesting. So what I want to do here actually is I want to use not all Unix time but all all time that's possible. And I think I have that written down. This is like plus minus 30,000 years from, from now. And I do think I have that written down somewhere. In fact, it might actually be in uh, bclib.h. Um, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Um, so we will go ahead and include bclib.h even though it's technically, and I think there's a way to do this that's correct. There's a way to include it that doesn't break things. And I think it might just be, yeah. So you kind of have to do it like with this whole path here. 
Um, because C, wow. Because C is not going to let you get away with a relative path unless it's in the include path, which it's not. Um, and these are just dec function declarations. They don't actually define functions, so we'll get to them in just a second. Uh, furnish C standard.tm. That just means we're going to use the um, this uh, list of ephemerises or ephemerides uh, to get our data from. This is the standard list we always use. And now we're going to say from we're going to create a window that goes from s time to e time. That is all time that is available, and put it into CN fine. Okay, gfuds, gfuds. Okay. So this is. Uh, let's look at the gfuds c function. That's the sort of thing that we're interested in. Um, and I should have a, a link to my local spice documentation. Um, and gfuds is the function user defined scalar. So perform a, a, a geometric find function on the user defined scalar quantity. The scalar quantity we're going to define, and we'll go ahead and define it here in, um, and we're going to go ahead and define it here in, let's make sure I don't have it defined anywhere else. Uh, yeah, here it is, okay. So the uh, GFQ value takes two things. One is it takes an ephemeris time, and the second thing it takes is a pointer to a value that which is what you actually return. This you'll notice the function itself returns void. It doesn't return that value, it just stuffs it into the value. And the thing we're interested in right now is going to be the difference between um, the distance between the Sun and Earth and the Earth and Mars. Obviously we're going to make it more generic later on, but for right now we can, we can use that. I don't think there is a generic um, distance function, so we will have to use the um, the Pythagorean theorem, a vector norm. We can, we can, we'll have to compute the vectors and find their lengths. So I think that is what we will need to do. I do not think there is a. Um, let's take a quick look here. Distance, vector distance. Okay, good. But we still need the vectors for that. Vector distance in general. Distance search. Um, again, this is not going to be quite what we need. So let's go ahead and use um, uh, this easier reader function, which will, which will let us know where the sun the Earth and Mars are at any given time. So let's go ahead and let's see. This is not difficult at all. So, so we'll just do this. Um, and again, as always, we don't return anything from these functions. They just stuff the value somewhere. So let's say SP key ZRC the target, which can either be a NAF ID or I think we can get away with just saying sun here. Spice double ET is whatever is going to be passed into us. Um, the ref, I think the ref is going to tell us, well, well, we'll take a look here. Um, okay. Um, we'll just use, it doesn't really matter what frame we use as long as we're consistent. So we'll just go ahead and use the J2000 frame, which is sort of the easiest frame to use. Aberration correction. Um, it really, we're going to use CN plus S, but again, it doesn't really matter because, again, these, these, these minor corrections are actually very minor. Okay. Now, the name of the observing body is going to be the solar system... Uh, uh, the Berry Center, th which is just zero, and I guess we have to do it like that. And then we need to send in a, um, a six, uh, six element double argument. So uh, that we probably need to define. Let's see. We could define it here. I'm kind of hesitant to do that because um, Because defining inside of a uh, subroutine is kind of ugly, but we can certainly do this. Spice double sun six, earth six, and Mars six. I don't think this will work, but let's find out. And then we need um, LT sun because it'll always give us light travel time whether we want it or not. So we kind of have to kind of have to deal with this. 
light travel time Mars and light travel time uh, Earth. And, and these are just declarations. All right, so we want to find f the first the position of the sun at time ET uh, for the J2000 epoch. So this will be the um, vector, the speed, and the, the distance from the very center, the vector from the very center. Um, we're going to send it sun as the thing to fill in, and we're going to send it the address of LT sun. So if this works, this should give us the position of the sun at a given time. Um, And this was for something else, which was the angular separation between Mars and Regulus. Uh, we're not using any of this. We don't probably don't need a return value because this is a it has a void return, so we don't really need this. Um, this is a little bit harder to explain. We'll get to it in in a minute. This is sort of the default. Um, this is sort of the default way of measuring whether a function is increasing or decreasing. It works for any function, and it takes as an argument a function. Um, and a time, and it measures the function that you give it, in this case GFQ, at two times and subtracts them. So right now this function does not do anything super useful. Um, I just want to make sure it's working, so we'll put in here printf um, Now one interesting thing here is you would think I could just put sun here, but it doesn't work you actually have to sort of give out the uh, the elements individually. It, you can't sort of say this is a uh, this is an array so just print it. So let's just see if to right now we have something that will actually work um, and we're not even going to go as far as so we're going to create this window here and you know this this, this should all compile but we're not going to use it. So all we want to do, no, do right now is say um, CGFQ uh, let's see, GFQ and spice double value. Oh, value is the thing that gets assigned. Um, so, I mean, we're not going to even use the value because we're just looking for the print, but we need to have one. So we'll send in the value as like being step or something. So let's say GFQ at zero, the value being, um, we'll just say ampersand of step. And then we will say here, exit minus one because we don't really want to exit properly yet okay so if this this works we should it, we want to make sure that we're actually sort of um, doing something that kind of works um, and I probably should have paid more attention to what the uh, whether BC comp dist fun unused variable ref val I don't know if that is a um, I don't know if that's a fatal error oh apparently it's not Okay. Fantastically strange. Did I have percent %d where I meant to say percent %f? Yes, I did. So uh, I probably meant to say percent %f, percent %f, percent %f, percent %f. So the, um, the, the errors we saw were just... Uh, okay, fantastic. So this gives us the sun's position with respect to the solar system very center and the second set of coordinates gives us the sun's velocity with respect to the solar system Barry Center. Okay. Now this isn't particularly interesting because the Barry Center and the so sun are always pretty close. So now let's go ahead and do this for the other things we want. One is Mars and one is our own planet, Earth, in case you didn't know what our planet was. And we're going to Mars. And actually, we could probably use the same variable here because we're not actually interested in the light travel time. We will be nice and use different variables, but we don't have to. Okay. And why don't we go ahead and print out all three of these. And I'm going to use a little bit of a cheat here by che turning Sun to Mars using Emacs. And then over here, turning Sun to Earth, also using sort of Emacs, exactly Emacs. A little bit uh, high-pitched voice I noticed today, and uh, I'm, ha I'm probably just dying of asthma, so it's not a huge deal, but you know, whatever. Um, okay, let's see what this does. Insufficient data has been loaded to, to the start of Mars at, whoa! 
That, um... That is very strange, and I think I know why. Um... That is very strange, actually. And I think the reason for this is we actually need to use the planet's berry centers, not the actual planets themselves, although I'm somewhat surprised. Oh, I know what it is. If you actually want to use the exact position of Mars, you need to use the uh, Mars-specific kernel, which includes Phobos and Deimos, which we're not using at all. But that's okay, because we really, don't, we really are going to just stick to the berry center of the Mars system, which, because Phobos and Deimos are so light, is like about five to six inches from where, um, where Mars actually is. The center of Mars and the center of the system are very close. For the Sun and the Earth, I think we can leave it like this. Um, the Earth, I'm pretty sure we have. Because uh, if we use the very center of Earth, um, it would be the center of the Earth and the Moon, which is not that far. It's about a thousand kilometers from the center of the Earth itself. But I think we can get accurate results all the way uh, 15,000 years on either side. So this was a good good issue. Good, we fix this, and then we do this, and we get... Um, and we get some numbers, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's see if these numbers are um, reasonable. Um, so this says that um, Mars is about 206 kilometers, 206 million kilometers rather, away from the Sun, wha whereas, because these two numbers are very, very small. Uh, whereas for this one, we would probably need to c compute the actual vector norm, but it's uh, over 27 million. Uh, this is the biggest number here, 57 million kilometers. Um, but uh, these these numbers are uh, really we we don't know. So why don't we actually do a little bit better than this, and we can actually print out the um, the norm of the distance um, f Earth, Mars, and the, the Sun's going to be very close to the very center, so we're not really that interested. Um, so I think what we can do here there is a norm function. Um, surface normal, orthonormal frame, unit vector, there's a, there's a V norm, I think, vector norm, three dimensions, and I think it takes, uh, oh, it takes an array of three arguments, so there's something a little bit clever here. Um, for Mars, we're going to go ahead and put this as a fourth, as a seventh thing to print. Um, now you might say that Mars is a six uh, is a six element array, so how can I just pass it? And it's because V norm it turns out sorry 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 V norm C yeah. So you might wonder how come I can just send it uh, just send it an array of six elements where it wants an array of three elements, and it turns out because of the way these functions work, it'll just use the first three elements of the norm to compute the. D to compute the, the full norm. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for Earth. And after this test, we will start to move towards our actual goal of, of finding when um, the Earth is closer to Mars or the Sun. Okay. Oops, we need to do another make. And there we go. So Mars is about 200. So Earth is about 146 million. This is about correct. I happen to know the Earth's about 150 million kilometers from the Sun, so it's not unreasonable to say that this, this number is, uh, is what we need. Um, okay, so now we want to know which is closer to the Earth. So, uh, we actually want to go ahead and fill in a uh, value now, and we'll, sh we'll see how to do that in just a second here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is the, um, the distance between... Let's see, got to be a little bit careful here. Uh, we're going to create a new array. I think we can actually subtract vectors, though. I think there's a way to do this. But we can subtract vectors, or add vectors. Vector subtraction in three dimensions. And this will give us... Um, okay, apparently we have to send it a third, a third vector for the result. So it's not tremendously exciting, because we can sort of do that ourselves, but, you know, whatever. Um, so we're going to say the distance from this, we need the Earth-Mars distance and the Earth-Sun distance. So we're going to call these Earth-Mars and Earth-Sun. 
Um, so we have these nice vectors here, and then we're going to say, I think it's uh, V sub C. And again, we're going to cheat a little bit here because we're actually getting six element vectors, but we're only going to use three elements of them. So V sub C, and it doesn't really matter what the order is because we're going to just care about the norms. Um, Earth, Mars, Earth, Mars. Okay. And then Earth, Sun, Earth, Sun. Okay. And of course, what we really want is the norms of these vectors. We don't want, we don't care really about the distance so much. Um, but we can't, because V sub C returns void, as you can see. Uh, v norm actually, I think, returns uh, an actual value. So now we need to do the sort of V norming on this. So we'll just say uh, double, and we'll use spice double just to be nice. EM, meaning the Earth Mars distance, is V norm C of Earth Mars. And the Earth Sun distance is V norm C of Earth Sun. So we'll leave these here as comments because they are interesting. Um, wait, I don't think you can comment that way and see it's a macro. So we'll do this, and then we'll say let's take a look at the Earth Mars and the Earth Sun distance. And we're not quite done yet, but but we're getting there. I mean, we're getting to where we're sort of moving away from just the testing stage. Okay, and these values, um, which one did I print first? Earth, Mars, Earth, Sun. Um, I don't actually know where Mars was on the on the uh, zeroth, um, at the 2000 e epoch. Um, so I don't know if these are correct. But I do know that uh, if we go through, like, uh, the closest we get to Mars is about 75 million kilometers, I think. Um, so what we actually want to return now is not either of these distances, but rather the difference in these distances. Uh, and we need to be a little bit careful here. Well, it doesn't actually matter because we want to find out when these, these distances are equal to zero. Um, but let me go ahead and do another test here because I'm, I'm bored. Um, let's go ahead and look sort of day by day. And do I need to declare I? I already have I declared, don't I? Yeah. Um, for i equals zero, i less than 500, i plus plus. Um, and actually, we're not printing anything again, so this is kind of weird. But and we're going to say i times 86,400. So we should now see the closest approach of Mars to us, roughly, to within the given day. Okay, and let's take a look here. So you'll notice the Earth-Sun distance is pretty constant. That's the second column there. It's fairly constant, and it would, we would expect it to be like that. So here goes the uh, Earth-Mars distance, went way up, coming down, 178, 103. Um, is 500? Oh, 500 days might not be enough, actually, because I think our Sidonic period with Mars is like 600-something days. So let's go ahead and bump this up to 1,000. And I do a make. Okay, so... It's going to go up first, go all the way up to our maximum distance from Mars. Then it's coming down 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, blah, blah, blah. And let's see what the closest we get to Mars. We get pretty damn close to Mars. Okay. So it says our closest distance to Mars is 67 million kilometers. Um, why don't we go over here and ask... 67 million kilometers. 54.6 million kilometers, but that doesn't happen very often. So let's see what the more frequent uh, closest distances are. Um, let's see here. The Earth and heart in perfectly circular orbits. Um, let's see. So they don't give a sort of a general number here, 54.6 million, and the number we're seeing here is 67 million, which seems a little bit higher than I would want it to be, but perhaps that is correct. Um, 
Let's see if there's a 67 in here somewhere. Um, so, um, numbers are a little bit suspicious, but not suspicious enough for me to worry about. Um, Certainly the distance from the Earth to the Sun is very small in January, and it increases, as we see here, through up to July. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried here. I think these numbers are reasonably accurate, though I am a little bit worried. But I think, I think we're fine here. So what we actually want to return now from this function, which means we want to set value equal to, is the difference between these two. And we're going to go ahead and give it as a sign difference. Um, and it doesn't really matter which way we do this calculation, but we do need to know that in this case, positive means, I'm going to go ahead and make a note here, positive means that Mars is further. And we do need to know that part of it. So what's the point of all of this, uh, just defining this function here? Well, so now we can go back over here and do our geometric search. Um, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this. I will comment it out because I kind of want to keep it. So what does GFUDS do? And GFUDS is the uh, sort of function of the hour here. And let's take a look at it real quick. GFUDS is a surprisingly complicated function. Um, I mean, it's not hard to use, but it's surprisingly useful. Okay. So the weird thing about GFUDS is the first thing it takes as an argument, the first two things it takes as an argument uh, are actually functions themselves, not as hard as it seems. Then it takes a bunch of stuff that's not very interesting. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's copy this over, and let's take a look at this, and let's call GFUDS C. So the first thing GFUDS C wants, and it'll tell us right here, the name of the routine that computes the scalar quantity of interest at some time. So for us, we define that to be GFQ. That's how we just did that. The second one is going to be also a function, computes whether the scalar quantity is increasing or decreasing. Now, this is we're going to actually be a little bit of a we're going to be a little bit of a cheat here. Uh, we could certainly use the function the way it is because it turns out there's another function. Um, called um, UDCC, this one here, which will automatically tell you whether a function is increasing or decreasing by measuring it at two different places and, and returning the value. Um, and it turns out we can actually, we don't have to use it like this. We can actually use it, uh, just, we could just say UD funds ET plus 10 minus UD funds ET minus 10. We have to be a little bit careful there because, of course, uh, the function that we call GFQ doesn't return a value. Rather, it uh, assigns a value to a, to a variable that you pass into it. So I'm, I think there is a bclib.h function that will do this. Let's find out, though. These are the names of the planets. Planets to strings, don't care. Miles to kilometers, come miles. Here to t. Divide to t. t to unix. Pause x, y. Oh. Um... I don't know why that's interesting. That's probably does the same thing as what we're already doing. Earth vector, Earth max angle, Earth sun min angle, sky elevation, uh, rise set. Okay, so here you'll see. Um, no, actually, you don't. Um, between, boy, I could have used some of these functions. Signum, e ecliptic to ec the equator to ecliptic change. Geometric info just gives you a whole bunch of information about the target you send in at the time you send in. Uh, as ultimate azimuth altitude is decreasing. Yeah, so this is um, an other way of calling that, of, of figuring out that function. Uh, whether something is decreasing or not is, for example, this looks at it at ET minus 1 uh, and then assigns that value to res 1. Then at ET plus 1, assigns the value to res 2, and then checks to see 
uh, whether res2 is bigger or less than res1. So is decreasing, and again, is decreasing takes as its first argument a function itself. Uh, then it takes um, a time, an ephemeris time, and finally it takes a variable that it actually just uses to set. Uh, so, so this is decreasing function um, is decreasing function is actually it does really the same thing UDDCS does, but if we like it a little bit better, we can just say. Um, In fact, we don't even need this function, I don't think, because, yeah, we can just say our function will be is decreasing. So not very exciting, but, but workable. So the is decreasing function we should understand, which is uh, it takes the value of the function that's passed in, so the function is actually passed in as a function, at et minus 1, one second before the requested interval, one second after, and then it checks to see whether the later time res2 is bigger or smaller than res1. That tells us whether it's decreasing or not. So we can pass this in here as our function that tells us whether something is increasing or decreasing. Um, Jesus. And it occurs to me I probably could have used some of these other helper functions that I wrote. Um, and maybe I should do that. Uh, but for right now, let's continue with gfuds. So those are the two sort of weird-looking uh, arguments that it has. The remaining arguments are actually fairly simple. Okay, so you do da da da. Relate is says, what, do, what is it we want to know about the scalar quantity? In our case, we want to know when it's exactly equal to zero, or, you know, when it's relatively close to zero. Um, and I think, yeah, this should be okay, because it uses binary search, so we should be fine. So we're going to say equal, and then the question is, of course, well, you want it equal, what do you want it equal to? And that's the ref reference value, and we want it equal to zero. We want to know when the two things are exactly uh, at the same uh, distance, Earth, Mars, and Earth, Sun. Okay, and then we, um, the next f thing we need is adjustment. Uh, quantity do we, is, okay, if the search for an absolute minimum is, for, um, is not used for searches for local extrema, equality and inequality must have value zero for search such searches. Because we're looking for an equality, this needs to be zero. The step value here um, take, and by the way, they, they, they actually miss this here. Uh, we'll take an inordinately long unit of time is what they're trying to say here. Now it turns out because of the way we, uh, the Earth-Mars orbit is, um, we could use a number that's like 30 days or even lo longer. We're going to use one day, 86,400 seconds more than it's, you know, it's more than uh, small enough. It's not a huge deal. Um, let's see. Okay, so at intervals is the number of intervals uh, which th uh, at least as large as the number of intervals with the search region on which the specified is monotone increasing or decreasing. We are doing this with a huge, huge number of 30,000 years. So we are going to use, I um, don't think we need max win here, though. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use, like, um, I think if we will be safe if we use uh, 200,000. But it's going to be pretty big here. Uh, then the spice cell CN fine. That's the, um, that is the, the result window. Oh, actually, we do use it here. Sorry, so we are going to define it, and we're going to define maximum to be a huge number, uh, like two hundred thousand, because we expect to use it quite a bit. And we might actually do this at a smaller interval right at the beginning, um, to. Uh, in fact, let's do that. So this is just for testing. We'll start with ephemeris times zero, which is. Um, which is 1970, and then we will say 30 years from that. Um, so that's the first, then we'll say 60 years from that. Okay, we don't need this anymore. Let's see, 200,000, and I'm going to just call this max win now, because um, we're using a macro, we're using a, a, a constant, as it were. 
Um, number of intervals. CN fine, and that's the the um, CN double precision, which confines the time period over which the search is conducted. Single interval or a um, hmm, something might be wrong here. Oh no no no, okay yeah. Result. So CN fine is the. Um, uh, let's see. So we send in CN fine, and it also will get changed uh, to be equal to. Let's see. And to do that, um, so we'll send in CN fine as our spice cell. And we'll send in result as our spice cell, which I think we've already defined above. They're big enough to, to hold this. Okay. Let me make sure we have defined both. We have. Um, the reason CN find is only two, uh, you know, has a size of two, is it only holds two times. It holds zero and this time. So the confinement window doesn't have to be huge. The results window has to be big enough to hold every single time the, this number becomes zero. So... I think we're good there. Um, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and use the rest of this code. Um, so the count is going to be how many times uh, our, our, our value hit zero. And then over here, apparently with very poor formatting, I've decided to do this. Um, we don't really need a beginning and an end. We'll go ahead and print them out just for fun, but we won't need them uh, because uh, they're going to be the same time value. So, um, so that's not going to be very, very interesting to us. Uh, we will fix that in just a second, but for right now, I think we have enough here to test with. Let's see if this even makes. Okay. Um, and it does not, oh, I know it's doing that, because we actually still have, inside of um, our GFQ function, we don't need to print anymore. We're actually going to return stuff now. And it would help if we were to remake it. Okay. So according to this, on 2001, March 21st, the Sun and Mars were equally distant from the Earth. And then again on the 20th, there is one other thing we want to know, which is whether or not uh, they're equidistant, but which is getting further, Mars or the Sun. But that's that's sort of a minor issue for right now. Um, now, there's a lot of ways to test this. Um, and one of the uh, more unusual ways to do it will be to use Stellarium, because I like using Stellarium whenever possible. I want to make sure it's not already running, so pgrep shows it's not. Um, so let's use Stellarium. We're going to have to... Oh, good. It is, in, it is in windowed mode. We're going to have to shrink it down a little bit, unfortunately, because we need to get to some of our other windows as well. Um, we will use the date. And let's see what the... Um, okay, that was kind of nice, but it would be... We kind of still need these values. Let's see what, it's, what it is happening closest to, to today. Uh, May 31st of 2020. So let's do that. Uh, and again, we're, this is not going to need to be super exact. Because we we sort of know the sun is always going to be... Come on. Really? Okay. We know the sun's always about 93 million miles away, so that's not a, that's not a huge um, issue. It's really going to be a question of how far away is Mars. And let me turn off the ground and the atmosphere. And let's see, this has a lot of distance. Okay, that's not good at all. Um, the distance of two, po that's twice as far away as the sun. So this is clearly not doing what we expect, except of course I forgot it's not 2020, it's 2019 for some reason. Let's just do this, and now let's see how far away it is. Uh, distance about one astronomical unit. So this is this is a pretty good uh, c you know confirmation that uh, Mars and the Sun. And we can also now just look at the Sun, 
because and it is also at 101 points. So it's very, very close. So this is this is good. We're confident about that answer. Let's do one more. Let's do, oh, I don't know. Let's do April 29th, 2003. 2003. April. Why must you do that to me? And, okay. The sun always about approximately one astronomical unit away. That is sort of the definition. And here we see that uh, distance is about one, almost exactly one astronomical unit and falling. So if we waited long enough, it'd be exactly one astronomical unit. Okay, so we're pretty confident this is actually telling us what times um, what times these, these two distances are equal. The next question, of course, is when this happens, um, well, first of all, we probably want the information in seconds because we're going to be using interval lengths. We're not, we don't need the dates as printed times. So, and the other thing we need to know, and it's really, really important actually, is whether or not the number is increasing or decreasing. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Um, we don't need either of these. Uh, we only need really, we don't even need the end, end string because the, when you're looking for a, a single value that it's equal to zero, that happens at exactly one instant of time. So here we're going to say percent %f beg, which is going to be the actual, uh, the ephemeral time that this is happening. And then the second thing we need to do is, uh, is decreasing, and I don't think I can do that as a, um, is decreasing as gfq, because this decreasing takes a function, um, an ephemeral time, which is beg, and unfortunately the th third thing it takes is of spice boolean, but it has to, you have to declare it ahead of time. So spice boolean, so we don't need either of these, by the way. Um, and this time I'm going to clean up the unused variables when it reports them. Um, I don't think, I don't know why the hell I have dv norm, I, I'm not going to use it. Um, and the only reason I need to declare these two functions here, I don't need to declare this one either. Um, the only reason I need to declare this function ahead of time is because I define it lower in the script. In fact, if I wanted to define it up higher in the script, um, I wouldn't even have to, well, you know what, let's do that. I don't, I wouldn't have to pre-declare it because I would, I would just be defining it at that time. So let's go ahead and do this. So this should be sun. I do I need I do need all three of these. Um, okay, and then I need the value of so. Um, okay, so this tells me whoa is. Oh, right, right. It is decreasing, and we need a spice boolean here to hold it, so we'll just create a spice boolean. Call it val, just to be picky. So here we actually need to call the function separately because, again, it doesn't return a value. Um, a little reason I couldn't write a function that does return a value uh, that's very similar to is decreasing, but, you know, whatever. GFQ beg, we send in the pointer to um, what am I looking at here? Yeah, we, in theory, we could just actually write here um, because GFQ is the function we want that takes a single variable. So yeah, you know what? Uh, tempting. So here we could just actually ask GFQ. Beg plus one minus GFQ. Beg minus one, which will effectively give us the same thing. Okay, so let's see what this does. Again, we're still in the shorter time interval of just about 30 years. And this time I did say I was going to get rid of the unnecessary variables. Too few arguments to function GFQ. Oh, fudge, because GFQ... That's right. 
GFQ actually also doesn't return anything, it sets something. So again, we will need to do GFQ bag plus one, and we need to put it somewhere. We're going to put it into um, step adjust ref fell. Are we using adjust? We are not. Are we using ref fell? I don't think so, because it's just going to be zero. Are we using? I don't even think we're using end anymore. Uh, yes, we are, because when you look at a window like that, you have to actually get both variables, whether you use them or not. And step, are we using step? I don't even think we're using step. No, we're not. So we can bring it down to this, and then we can use aft and before to uh, compute the values. Um, aft and before. just immediately after and before the um, so here now we would print out as these uh, value here uh, aft minus big because now we have actually sent them in as variables let's see this not compile now implicit declaration of function gfg I almost definitely meant gfq and I bet you I used gfg up there yep Q's and G's. I'll never get them straight. Uh, what else? Too few arguments to the function is decreasing. Oh, nope. Uh, it just needs to be aft minus beg now. Um, minus bef, not beg. After minus before. Okay. Unused variable val, because we were going to make it a spice boolean. Decided not to. Decided we're just going to print out the value of that uh, function. Okay, bc comp dist ran without issue. Now let's see what it returns. Okay. Um, so, boy, I wish I knew what I was talking about. Okay. So this is, at this point in time, it is moving positive again, I think we actually said because it was important to us. Positive means that Mars is further. Um, so that means Mars is now getting further away. Over here, Mars is getting closer again. So we could just, I mean, obviously we, we're going to do this within the program or some, some other way, but we could say it looks like there's about that many seconds where uh, Mars is further. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, am I going to really need to fix this calc function. Um, 604 days when Mars is further. Seems, seems like kind of a long time there. Um, followed by, well, actually, maybe that's not, because our Sidonic period with Mars is actually pretty large. So, and then the time that it's closer, of course, is going to be from here to here. So usually the Sun is, is closer than Mars if this my 205 days to where it's uh, so it's very very close to a um, 604, 205 that's 809 days. Very close to a 3 to 4 ratio if, if my calculations are correct. So now let's check to see what somebody else's answer was. Oh good, I got 10 points on my um, oh <laughs> I didn't get 10 points on that I got 10 points on something else entirely. Um, okay. So let's see, blah, 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 600 days. And it says Mars is closer, um, 22% of the Sidonic period to Mars, and six, let's see, so there should be a 200 days in here somewhere. Um, cosine is bigger. So we're, we're, we're good on 600 days, I think. We have that one pretty much nailed, 604.88. And let's see what we have for the uh, Mars is closer and 78% 600 days. So 22%, uh, so 80 20 is very close to the, so we're, we're well within the ballpark here of saying that uh, that Mars is closer 604.88 of the uh, 809 Sidonic period day. Um, and actually it's amazingly close to 810 days 
that our Sidonic period with Mars is. That is when Mars and Earth's relative positions repeat is the Sidonic period. Um, yeah, 810.06. Okay, so now, so we've written this. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and push it. You can't see where I'm going to push it, but I'm going to push it to the, to the GitHub, or, and to Git itself. I'm going to call it checkpoint to avoid uh, making sense for anyone. And it also occurs to me that I did not push the um, README for our earlier program until just now, but that's that's fine. Um, let's see, who, who am I boring to death? Wow. Um, okay. So now, of course, we want to go ahead and extend this all the way. Um, at some point, I want to find a way to interpret these values that makes more sense. Um, but really only in the sense that we can uh, we can find like the earliest and the latest times and the number of times it happens um, and how far apart those times are and stuff. So I think we're going to be fine, I think, if we, unless we get into an overflow situation here, um, we should be able to now do this, compile, run, and get a fairly beefy answer. Um, and I might want to actually just, I'm going to do a T because I want to actually want to see the results myself. And this will take a little while because we are looking at a 30,000 uh, time interval. The biggest problem I fear is that we will run out of space because our max window size is not big enough. However, um, I don't think that will actually happen. So, fairly happy. Um, Again, there's really no way to get um, sort of a progress on this, as far as I know. Well, there actually might be a way to get progress on that, but uh, uh, by, for example, we could have a printf inside of the, the gfq function to see how often it gets called. Uh, but, uh, but, 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 uh, yeah, getting bored. So. This is uh, 30,000, our last was like 40, so this might take longer than we want. Um, and we could always limit it to like a 500 period year around the year 2000, which would be more than enough for our purposes. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a hog when it comes to doing stuff like this, so... Let's see if we can wait this out. Um, while we're doing that, I'm going to try to find a way to fix... Um, there's sort of a hack way of fixing the clock on um, in Unix, not the correct way at all. And that is to just call NP NTP date frequently, um, which I used to do at one point. Let me... I'm, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, which I used to do sort of regularly, like in Crontad every one minute. Um, and I'm trying to see where I have that. Um, and yeah, it's basically something like, which I guess is the same thing as R date. I can't even do that, can I? So, um, it's like NTP date, and then you follow it by a server name. Um, like utcnist.colorado.edu, and then it'll automatically set your um, set your clock correctly. R date minus s does exactly the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and at some point I'm going to start using screen, which lets me have which lets me multiplex, but I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. So um, That's always going to be a bad thing. And voila. Our time has been corrected. So, getting a little bit peeved at temp comp just not doing what I want. The way I want to do it. Um, now, the next step here would be, of course, to generalize this uh, to be uh, any three planets. Uh, that is, you know, uh, the first planet would say we want, like, the distance from planet 1, whether it's closer to planet 2 or planet 3. So in this case, Earth, whether it's closer to Mars or the Sun. And um, 
and that's how we would do that. So, so this would not be a very hard thing to generalize. We might want to change some of these values, um, you know, from P1 to P2, P3, and sort of Sun, uh, Mars, and Earth. But aside from that, uh, this would be a fairly simple thing to do. And let's see. So tempcomtist.txt is going to take a while to, to come up with what it wants to do. Um, well, let's go ahead and cheat and make this a thousand years instead of uh, 30,000 years. Uh, let's give it another 15 seconds. So, whoa, my clock on my wall is actually behind time. Whoa, 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 whoa. This clock is ticking much faster than it should. It's actually now already... Hmm. So I'm going to do a date. Reset date. That really would have gone better, but... Okay, so now it's... But notice the time is frozen now until it catches up. And um, part of this is going to be... Well, there is something called edge, ti edge time x, which tells you how fast the clock is running. Uh, and I think HW clock can do that too. Uh, yeah, so December 7th? Of course, this is a virtual machine. There's no real hardware clock here. Okay, I'm getting bored of this. I'm going to kill percent four. Going to kill off that job. I am just going to bring it from minus 500 to plus 500 years. Uh, so let's see. Um, this is no longer correct. So minus 500 times 365, that's how many days there are in the Gregorian year, times 86,400 seconds, times exactly the same thing except positive. This will be a thousand year window. And, and when I do do the answer to this, when I do write the answer to this, I should probably be honest and mention that uh, you could use a longer window. It probably won't help much, but you could, you could do it. So now, this should take about longer than it did for our little 60-year window, but nowhere near as long as it would for, there we go, very nice. Okay, let me see how big this file is. Um, tiny. So we could copy it over here if we wanted to. Um, so now what we want to know is the interval. You know, I think we can actually just cut and... How, much, how big is that file? Not very. 936 uh, lines. So I'm tempted to put it in there, but let's let's first of all make sure we understand what we're doing here. Um, so we're looking for now is sort of the time between. We're looking for sort of the uh, the times between when Mars is further and when Mars is closer. I might have reversed that, but but we're looking for the intervals between these two times, and um, and we're looking sort of for the average of that number. So I'm trying to see if there's an easy way to do this that doesn't require creating a spreadsheet. I mean, there, al there always is. Um, and of course, because these things alternate, you could probably do something really clever um, by looking at the, um, by having Perl keep one line at a time and then store the last. Let's, let's, let me show you what I mean. So Perl minus NL, uh, first of all, we just make sure we can print it. Lovely. Now what we want to do is we want to say um, we want to sign dollar sign x to be this, and then we want to print uh, dollar sign minus dollar sign x, and we should, if this works, get interval lengths here. Um, and with the exception of the very first one, which because it has a zero there, this will give us the interval lengths of uh, between when Mars is further and closer. And we now need to look at every other line. Uh, skipping the uh, first line, of course. And there is a way to do that as well. Huh. That's interesting how much these things vary by what I would expect them to vary by. 
Um, in fact, it might be too much, actually. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe. Um, of course, we are also looking at um, at seconds, which is not really. So why don't we go ahead and actually do this? That didn't help at all. Um, that that was kind of weird, actually. Do I mean down divided by this? Okay, so why isn't that doing anything? That's actually kind of interesting. It's like, we don't care if you divide or not. Um, that. It might be because of the way print works, I need to put an extra parenthesis around here, because print is taking this as an argument. There we go. Okay, so it, it actually is sort of a, a hodgepodge of values here. Uh, 178 days, 165, 121, and uh, huh. I don't know if make of this. This might. I don't know if this is accurate or um, or inaccurate. I mean, it should be accurate because we, we we looked at it. Um, But, but that is sort of interesting. And then, of course, the Sidonic period would be the sum of those two. I wonder if that's accurate. So it's like it changes a lot. Um, hmm. Well, I think I'm confused enough about this that we're going to stop for the day. But we've gotten pretty far. We don't have to worry about keeping the temp file because we can recreate it anytime we want. Um, we will, however... Um, nah, I was going to say we could, in fact, just run it for 30,000 years while we're gone, but I think this is, uh, this is actually confusing enough that we, we kind of want to look at it. I kind of want to graph what these, uh, every other value is here because that seems like uh, those values are interesting. And um, we might be able to use the online Mathematica to do it, say, you know, graph every other, ignore the first result, then graph every other and then graph the sum of the two to see if the Sidonic period is uh, approximately constant, but the actual distance varies uh, quite a bit, and then get an average out of all that. So for right now, that's the end of the stream. Thank you for watching, and uh, have good uh, whatever the hell you have.